Hello Stigmas, today we are going to look into the physics uh, behind uh, something which has taken us to the moon, taken us to the Mars and has the capability of taking us to any distant planet you wish if you have enough fuel. Yes, I'm speaking about the rocket and what we have here is a rocket at time t. It has an initial velocity v and that is a rocket obviously has fuel and uh, after some time t plus delta t it emits a fraction of the fuel delta m outside with a velocity u with respect to the rocket so what is u u is nothing but the velocity of uh, delta m with respect to the rocket Then if u is the velocity of delta m with respect to the rocket, then what is the velocity of a delta m with respect to ground? Let us find that. So the velocity of delta m, which is the fraction of the fuel, so I will say the velocity of the fuel with respect to the ground, would obviously be equal to by relative addition of velocities, the velocity of rocket with respect to ground plus the velocity of fuel with respect to the rocket and that would mean that what is the velocity of rocket with respect to ground let us say that after a time delta t that is at time t plus delta t the velocity of the rocket is v plus delta v that is the change in velocity is delta v and this is exactly what we have to find we have to find the velocity of the rocket at any given time t so the velocity of rocket with respect to ground is nothing but v plus delta v and the velocity of fuel with respect to the rocket is u and hence the velocity of the fuel with respect to the ground is v plus delta v plus u and to find the velocity of the rocket at some later time t what we are going to do is use momentum so let us look at the momentum of the rocket at time t and at time t plus delta t what is the momentum of the rocket at time t at time t the momentum of the rocket or along with the fuel right not only the rocket but it also contains that delta m mass inside it so we are going to see not only the, uh, the rocket but we are going to focus also on the fuel delta m which will be emitted by the rocket later so the rocket along with it the mass delta m will constitute a system and hence we are going to look at the momentum of this rocket fuel system as a whole so we get the momentum uh, at time t of the rocket fuel system as m plus delta m into v right and similarly the momentum of the rocket at t plus delta t would be equal to the mass of the rocket times its velocity which is v plus delta v plus delta m which is the mass of the fuel emitted uh, by the rocket times uh, its velocity what is the velocity of a fuel with respect to the ground this so we are going to get v plus delta v plus u and hence what the change in momentum is going to be so the change in momentum will be p t plus delta t minus p t it would be equal to let me open the brackets so that i get m v plus m delta v right i'm just opening these brackets over here and similarly doing that over here i will get plus delta m into v plus delta m delta v plus delta m into u minus right minus i'm going to get m into v here I'm taking V inside, so I'm going to get minus M into V minus delta M into V. Now you can easily see that uh, there are some terms which get cancelled, this one and this one, and this one and this one. They will get cancelled to give us 
m delta v plus this term now if you look carefully at that term for a very very small time right for delta t tending to zero that is for a very very small time the rocket will emit only a very small amount of fuel and its velocity will also increase by a very small amount only gradually will its velocity increase by a very large amount but for a very small time let's say for one microseconds or one milliseconds for very very small times it will emit only a small fraction of fuel which we are calling delta m uh, and its velocity will also be increased by a very small amount and hence we can neglect delta m into delta v right so what we'll be left with is m delta v plus delta m into u will be our change in momentum delta p and now what i'm going to do next is divide this by delta t and take the they use this condition that delta t tends to zero so what i'm going to do next is divide by delta t to one And then take the limit t tending to delta t tending to zero. So limit delta t tending to zero. and now i'm sure you have started to see what i'm trying to do i'm trying to convert the changes into derivatives because this is exactly the definition of a derivative and hence all the changes will become a derivative to give us dp upon dt is equal to m dv upon dt plus u dm upon t and what is dp upon dt it is nothing but the force on the rocket along with the fuel right so that is a force exerted on the rocket fuel system so this is nothing but the external force on the rocket fuel system and this is the equation that we wanted to find this is known as the rocket equation and this is the equation that is behind every single rocket i mean it is just wonderful how such complicated a rocket is very complicated but the physics behind rockets is so very simple now if you are wondering what this external force is in the case of earth it could be the gravitational force of earth or the drag force the air drag provided by the earth's atmosphere now all of this equation is elegant more elegant is physics because as i do not know if you remember but i had told you that there are multiple ways in which you can derive the same equations in physics and i'm going to show you just that i'm going to show you how powerful physics can get so now what i'm going to do is derive this equation using the formalism of center of mass so what i'm going to do next is use center of mass to derive the rocket equation so if you have not watched my previous video on center of mass uh, go watch it now because you would not be able to understand what i'm going to do now unless you know what a center of mass is so go watch that video first and then come back and watch the rest of this video so the definition of center of mass if you remember is equal to this m1 plus m2 for two masses now if i want to find the velocity of the center of mass what should i do yes just differentiate with respect to time so to get the velocity of the center of mass 
we just differentiate with respect to time to get the dots on top of the position vector because the masses are just constant. And now what I can do is use this equation for the velocity of the center of mass for the case of rockets. And how am I going to do that? For that, let me write it in this manner first, m1 plus m2 into r dot is equal to m1 r1 dot plus m2 r2 dot, right? I can write it in this manner. And then I'm going to say mass M1 is the mass of the rocket and mass M2 is the mass of the fuel exerted by the rocket at the time T plus delta T. So what am I going to get? I'm going to get M plus delta M into R dot is going to be equal to M into the velocity of the rocket. What is the velocity of the rocket at T plus delta T? It is simply the difference that is the velocity of the rocket is uh, v plus delta v right? at t plus delta t minus v. That is, I'm going to look at the change in velocity of the rocket. So what I'm going to get is uh, over here is delta v plus delta m into its change in velocity, which is obviously delta v plus u, right? It, it's a velocity with respect to the ground is uh, v plus delta v plus u and i just subtracted v from this to get delta v plus u that is all i do. that is because i'm working in the center of mass frame of reference and from the center of mass frame of reference these are the velocities of uh, the rocket and the fuel emitted by the rocket because the center of mass initially you need to understand this very carefully the center of mass of the rocket initially was obviously traveling with a velocity v but and the external forces as external on this rocket is if it is zero then the velocity of the rocket at some later time is also going to be also going to remain v that is i'm saying the velocity of the center of mass of the rocket was initially equal to v so the velocity of the center of mass final is also going to remain v because the external force on the rocket is v. So basically I'm working with the center of mass coordinates, that's it. And uh, if the velocity of, of the rocket with respect to center of mass has to remain v, then the velocity of uh, this mass delta m with respect to the center of mass will be v, uh, v plus delta v plus u minus v, right? Minus the velocity, of, that is how we find relative velocity. And similarly with the rocket. And hence, what we are going to get next is that this is nothing but the total momentum of the rocket, and that is equal to m delta v plus again i'm going to neglect delta m into delta v so that i am left with m into u and now you have probably started to see that we have exactly what we had on top oh these are going to be derivatives so dm upon dt multiplied by u and uh, this would be equal to the external source on the rock. And this is exactly what we had found on top right. This is the equation of rockets. Just compare this with what we had got on top. This one. They are exactly identical. And hence you can see the power of physics. You can derive the same equations but with two different methods. Next, another thing that you should notice is that the rate at which the mass of the rocket is decreasing is obviously equal to minus dm upon d. That is because the mass is first present inside the rocket and then the rate at which the rocket expels the mass is the rate at which the rocket loses mass. And hence, if you put this in the rocket equation, what you are going to get is that m dv upon dt plus oh there's going to be a negative sign so it will be minus u dm upon dt 
is going to be the external force and hence you can say that the we have over here a equation that is uh, completely in terms of m we do not have a uh, small m we have only capital m and that is better actually it is always better to work in terms of only a single variable and hence you can see that the equation which changed the world the equation which helped us to get into the moon is so simple and elegant that even an undergraduate student can understand it if he knows center of mass and if he knows momentum that is how powerful physics really is and that was all about rockets to motivate me to create more such fun videos do subscribe to my channel and do not forget to like this video i will see you in the next one thanks for watching